hours at Milo, and I received no information from that point for I don't know how many days. I am so sorry that no one is answering your calls or talking to you. If the calls come in on my email or on my telephone, I am trying to answer them as best I can. We did not, at least I can speak for Jane Kinghorn and I, while we were being evacuated, we did not know. Jamie won't know him sooner because he was on the pet rescue. I did not know about the doors being kicked in. Did your door not get kicked in? No, they locked it. Whitford's door didn't get kicked in either. My so someone knew what was going on. And they locked it and left my kitty with no litter box inside. I would rather have but that they, than what they went, went through. And but none of our neighborhood got kicked in. If you look at all of our, and I live over on 7th Street, we didn't get kicked in over there. And I don't understand why. We got people searched through our houses because the muddy footprints said so. But we were here, but I too was shut out of the emergency office. That, that didn't just happen to Danielle, it, they locked half of council out. And the, other, the other thing now for Danielle, the RCP say, it, this sergeant says he, he, he has to go through each file and they're throwing off blocks in front of everyone who brings their, their thing in. They took pictures of the place you registered that your door is fixed, and now they want more pictures or something else. They're policing us now. Nobody policed them when they broke in there. And, and it, I, it's beyond understanding why anybody with a half a brain couldn't get into my house without doing the damage they did. I just don't, I just can't comprehend it. And this letter is, is just a smoke screen from this guy. So, I, I met with the, a council member in Calgary, and in Calgary, the council was getting briefed three times a day by the EOC. That did not happen in High River, and I think that that is something, again, that this, the next council is going to have to address with their head of emergency operations, because that did not happen in other jurisdictions. The council members in other jurisdictions were seen to be key communicators to get information out to their, their constituents. Here, it was not the case. It was a lockdown. I got kicked out. I, uh, I, uh, Betty's already told you her experience. There were very, there was very little information shared with council, and that's something that has to be addressed. On, uh, on the second issue, this is why I raised it with Rick, Rick Fraser two weeks ago. I said, just do the right thing. Just, it's three thousand, four thousand dollars, which, from the perspective of a five billion dollar price tag that Rick keeps talking about. Is, is pretty small from a government's point of view, but it's pretty big to a person who is carrying that amount on a credit card. Just find a way to pay for it, go back to the federal government, talk, share it after the fact if you need to. Find a way to be able to get the money out so that people can get on with their lives. And I'm, gonna, I'm glad you're all here this evening because it certainly gives a little bit more heft to that argument. I'll keep on making it over the next couple of days and weeks and hopefully we'll get an answer. The last thing is, he also said about the RCMP and first responders and things they did. Well, in my area, the first responders were the residents, the people who came from the cabin to say this. I was standing on the shore, I had a grandson in there, and my son went from the city, helping people out, with two boats taking people out. When a young RCP officer walked by and saw a propane tank floating down the road, and his comment, his pretty shoes and everything, said, I guess we won't be barbecuing tonight. <laughs> Isn't that the truth? My, my first responders, there were six young guys who piled into a manure spreader and a manure truck and came and picked me up at the, uh, at the High River Hospital. We spent two and a half hours going and picking up people and pets all through the southwest part of town. It was uh, it was tremendous to see that kind of outpouring. So thanks for your comments, sir. Um, hopefully, uh, hopefully no one will escort me out of here this evening. I, I'm not a resident of High River. Um, I'm a resident of Nanton. And a friend and I came here as uh, word went out on the radio that they needed people with boats. So we came and we got people out. Thank you. Well, you know, and, and I only say that in context. No, please, no, no pause. I'm only give, saying this to give context. The context is, is I decided that I would not be a coffee shop complainer. So I proceeded to make phone calls in the midst of everything that was happening. I made phone calls and asked for no names. Well, I knew the names because I called them. But I would not release the names of law enforcement. Was what I'm hearing happening in High River? Off the record, they said yes. I was concerned. I immediately phoned the office of my member of parliament. I went and had a meeting with my member of parliament, 
who expressed no interest in keeping this issue on the front burner of anything. So everyone here, please take note of that. Yes. I'm glad that one person here knows who the member of parliament is. So, with that being said, as I was having that conversation, because I said, I'm concerned for every, not only resident of High River, but of Manton, of Alberta, because this issue, guns are very important, but this is not the critical issue here. It's about the privacy, it's about the rights that were said, what country are we living in? Every Canadian is concerned about what happened in High River. I don't think all Canadians get it. So that's the only reason why I said, I'm not going to complain at a coffee shop. I went and had a meeting with Pat Steer. It went much better than my meeting with Ted Menzies. Okay? But what Ted Menzies accused me of is not caring about the people of High River over this particular issue. I said, you have no idea what I did or didn't do in regards to High River. So, I don't live in High River. I live in Nanton. We have had two states of emergency in this calendar year declared in Nanton. I don't think a lot of Nanton residents know that. Under what happened here in the Emergency Measures Act, which I read as much as I could before I came here tonight, I also called a lawyer in Toronto, one of the leading lawyers for gun rights in Canada, Ed Barlow, and he said to me, and it's going as far back as the Magna Carta, it talks about the threshold of your home being sacred. Okay? It also says the Emergency Management Act that there is a difference. It says building. There is a difference between a building and a dwelling. And somebody needs to draw attention to that. They can enter a building without a warrant. They cannot enter a dwelling. So when they're trotting out this law business, somebody needs to challenge them on that because your home is different than a building. And I'm glad the people of High River are here tonight talking to you about this issue. Please tell every Canadian they should be concerned just because it wasn't their town.
They toss the whole house, mattresses upside down, drawers empty all over the floor. The house was ransacked by the RCMP. If you underestimate the gravity of this situation, you seal your own fate. The ball is in your court tonight. And across Canada, people are watching what you're doing. That's why I'm here. I flew in tonight to tell you that the people of Canada are watching you. And they believe in you. And they're holding hands with you. So say what you need to say. Do what you need to do. Richard Fritz, which is a lawyer here in Alberta, Richard has documents that he wants to share with you tonight where you can go to Richard and you can tell your story to him under the lawyer-client confidentiality that cannot be violated. He charges a whole whopping 50 bucks for this and if you don't have the 50 bucks, you tell Richard because we do. But we need to you to tell your story. The politicians of this country need you to tell your story. Please do that. Thank you for your time. In the 1930s, we heard of this kind of thing coming on in Germany. Some Germans accepted it, some flat it. Was the flat it got beat up, trashed over? Those of us that are speaking tonight are fighting against this. Uh, I just have a couple of questions. Did the doors in Beachwood get kicked in? Which is a political thing. That is saying yes. And Not all, but some. Well, the Donabai River or Province of Alberta rebate to the taxpayers of Pai River, $1.2 million for a burn that did nothing. Will they rebate that money? Let me get Betty downstairs and the question about that.
go through, find out what went wrong, change the practices, then we can give that kind of assurance. So thank you for sharing that. Ms. Hebert, my name is Stephanie Benet, and I'm a 16-year resident of Beachwood. I suggest you get your temperature back straight. We have, in fact, been wonderful contributing members of this community, and we do, in fact, pay a large, large portion of taxes. Now, I will set something straight. You're absolutely right. I'll tell you something. Doors in Beachwood didn't get, to get kicked in, and they didn't get kicked in because we were trapped in Beachwood by 8.30 that morning. So please, get your facts straight. Because we live in a nice community, because we picked this beautiful town with these wonderful people, do not persecute us wrongly because the province and the town put a burden around our community because we advocated. You know what? I'm not persecuting you at all. And I'm sorry if that's how you heard it. Because it is not. They have, they are the best protected place in High River. Does that mean they're a bad place to live? Of course not, it isn't. Does that mean that you don't pay taxes? You pay lots of taxes. You damn right, we do. And I'm sorry to see any of you leave. It's a beautiful little community. Well, and what I need people to understand is that this is not a pleasant situation. I mean, my heart breaks each and every single day for the people that have been terribly affected. But I will tell you, so were we. By 8.30 in the morning, our windows were breaking. Our doors failed.